introduce uh, the Unity intern, Stephen Fleming. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Completion to the next level and beyond. Well, in order to achieve the next level, you know, we have to acknowledge those who came before us. And the late Dr. Martin Luther King was definitely one of those of us who took things to the next level. Amen. Yeah. Alright. And that's what this is about. This is 2023. It's a new year. New beginnings. Some of us, you know, create rituals of, you know, making a bunch of promises and stuff like that. And some of them keep. Some of them, you know, by the time, you know, I guess June or July rolls around, like, what? What the fuck did I say? I don't know. You know. But we're being called by spirit to continue to express more of that divine aspect of us. We're actually here today to learn more about that divine aspect of us. We already know what it's like to be human. We know, we know, we know that story. We know that dance. You know, and not that I'm belittling that at all. You know, but what we actually are is the emergence of or the or the connection of the humanity and the divine. We are living portals. We are, we are miracles, living miracles that are bringing forth a divine manifestation, divine experience into, or divine manifestation into the human experience. That's what we are here. That's what taking it to the next level is about. Realizing more of your divine self, learning, learning who you really are. We already have our ideas of who we think we are. We have our mentally constructed self, a self that's full of ideas of who we believe that we are, and then we have who we really are. And we have that convergence of the two. So powerful, and that's why the crucifix is really our symbol. It's not about somebody being up on the cross. You know, if that's how you want to see it, because we always have a choice in how we want to see things. It's about that, about that convergence, that connection of the human plane, which is the horizontal plane, and the divinity, which is the vertical. Taking it to the next level, not bypassing either one, not bypassing our humanity, and not bypassing our divinity. Embracing each and every one, each part of us, and beholding it as bringing forth something that has not been expressed before. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 1, it reads, Therefore, let us go on towards perfection, Leaving behind the basic <laughs> teachings about Christ and not laying again the foundation. Now, let me tell you what that, that's about taking it to the next level. Now, let me tell you what's going on when the book of Hebrews is written. So, at this point in time, Christianity, for you know, lack of a better word, had become a joke. Okay? The first Christians, which they weren't even called Christians, they were called followers of the way. Okay, these were legendary Christians. These people were people that died for their beliefs. And they were they, 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 they were persecuted. They were, you know, I mean, you know, if, if you were a follower of the way, you know, you didn't, any day could be your last day. That's how it was. And so there was a kind of an honor and a nobility in that to be able to die for what one believed in. 
You know, and it, it inspired many more people. That's how the movement initially got inspired. It inspired many more people to become followers of the way. And then they became followers of Christ. And then later on, they stopped killing the followers of the way. They basically started mocking them. You know, you're Christian and, you know, things like that. So it became like a joke. So it, 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 it lacked the nobility and honor of the movement, it began to lack, and, 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 and the information is there. Historians know this. The information was there. So basically, people were like, you know, they didn't want to, you know, they don't want to be ridiculed and things like that. They didn't want that. So after a while, people started pulling away. The movement started losing energy. It started losing its appeal to the masses. So that's what inspired us. We don't want to talk about the same thing. We gotta talk about some new things. We gotta talk about taking it to the next level. You know, that was then. Now it's time to take it to the next level. That's what they were going through. And you know, we can identify with that. We, can, we have basic teachings about all sorts of things. It's time for us to take it to the next level too. All right, so is everybody ready? Ready to take it to the next level? All right, okay. All right, that's what we're about to start doing. Okay. Now, we all have areas in our life that we want to improve, right? Okay, all right. I just want to make sure I'm in the right place. <laughs> now, what kind of steps in the, it just gets in the way and it doesn't really get in the way as much, but it does get in the way, is that we resist change. And, you know, I can understand, you know, as far as where our resistance comes from, because then we have to learn a whole new set of skills to, for, to, to accommodate this new changing whatever is going on. Now we have to learn a new way, you know, and, and, and for many of us, you know, we just got used to the old way, you know. We just got used to the old way. Now you got something new. Come on, give us a break. Okay. Well, first I want to, because in order to prepare us for the next level, there has to be a foundation that is instilled. We have to understand the impossibility of non-change. It is fundamentally impossible. Life would not be supported if it were not for change. It would not be supported at all, okay? There would be just nothing, okay? You know? Change is all a part of movement, so it's fundamental for us for the movement of life, okay? The matter wouldn't even exist, as a matter of fact. There would be no molecular movement as far as particles or anything if nothing changed. Does that make any sense? So there has to be change on a very fundamental level to be able to support what we're experiencing. And then if we are to experience any type of bringing into manifestation that mental picture that we have in our life of, of, of happiness, which really all happiness comes from within, but if we are to bring in that mental picture in, like, you know, as far as like any type of, uh, uh, improvement of life. It doesn't require external circumstances to change. It requires us to change. Now often we think in our mind that all we need to basically uh, complete that, that vision, that mental picture is, you know, uh, that companion, for example. That that, 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 that that perfect job, that, that et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we want that mental picture. We want that mental picture. But I pose this question to you. Are we willing to create the space necessary within us to bring that mental picture into a visible manifestation where it is expressing in our life right now? That's the question. 
Because oftentimes we don't want to change. Oftentimes we want, and if they could invent a pill for this, I mean, they would just be the, the, the biggest corporation in, in, in the world. You know, where we could just basically just take a pill and just have exactly the kind of life that we want to live without having to change our thoughts or anything like that. Okay, but it doesn't work that way. It definitely doesn't work that way. Quantum mechanics actually suggests that the that the life that you're actually living right now is the life of the uh, of the energy that you're actually putting out there right now. It's not the other way around. We think traditional thinking and programming has us believe that it's the other way around. That that it's the life out there that's impacting whatever's going on here. Actually, quantum mechanics actually suggests, or it's actually founded on the principle that what's going on in here is actually creating everything that's out there. Everything. Every beautiful moment, every sunrise, every turmoil, every storm, every dark night. So. And so I say this basically again to establish a foundation of, of understanding. In order to take it to the next level, you have to know what's going on. You have to know on a basic fundamental level. Then we'll get into the how-tos. But right now, you have to know what's really going on as far as whatever we're experiencing. Because, you know, we talk about thoughts and things like that. I'm not going to really talk about thoughts per se. Because we're taking it to the next level. You know, just like the people in Hebrew, it's time to take it to the next level. Time to keep on going. Okay. So when I say, when I ask, are we willing to create the space? Because oftentimes we contradict ourselves. We desire what we are not willing to provide the necessary space for. Our thoughts and our actions, even though we're saying this is what we want, our thoughts and our actions are really saying more loudly otherwise. So which one is the universe supposed to listen to? The one that we're actually saying? The, one, the, the mental picture that we have? Or what we believe about ourselves? Now, I'm going to tell you about some of the reasons why, why certain things certain things happen. I'm going to actually outline these things one by one. Part of the reason that we don't create the necessary space is because we've been so traumatized with telling ourselves the same story all the time about us not being enough. And so we have what acts as our security detail, our amygdala. And our amygdala, I talked about this in the previous talk, it was responsible for our survival. Okay, it was responsible for the preservation of the human species. It was there to protect us against the prehistoric this and the prehistoric that. Okay? It, 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 it would search the environment and become suspicious of shadows and things like that because there might be a leopard waiting to pounce at, you know, out of the shadows. So it kept you in this heightened awareness mode for survival of the species. Now, it hasn't gone anywhere. Okay? We don't have leopards pouncing out at us to get us anymore. We don't have, you know, things you know, dangerous and, and if unless you are have you have the type of uh, job where you know you have to really uh, attack into that fight or flight system on a regular basis, it's overkill. It is overkill. So it it, it continues to be active, but now it's active in a social setting. And so it feels like it's our protector. So the amygdala actually has a memory also. And it's an older part of the brain from, you know, came in. It's an older part of the brain, okay? We have newer part of the brain, like the frontal cortex, but it's an older part of the brain, again, that was there at an older amount of time, but it's still there, okay? 
So it remembers things. It remembers when you were disappointed. It remembers, like if you get excited about something like this, this new job, maybe you met somebody brand new or something, or you know, as far as a companion. And you know, you're really excited, you're really enthusiastic about this person, or this job, or, or whatever, a business opportunity. Maybe you're an entrepreneur, you know, like me. You know, and there's this new business out there. Oh my God, this is just great. But then, this, your amygdala then acts as your security. It, 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 it's like your reality check. It then comes in really go, oh, whoa, 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 Stephen, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Calm down. Now let's remember all these times we got disappointed before. Let's remember that. You remember all them times? Okay, all right. And so what it actually does is it creates worst case scenarios. That's what it does. It, it bets against you. So even though there's a part of you that is hopeful for the future, you're, you're, you're happy and you're hopeful, there's another part of you that's betting is not gonna happen as waiting for the other shoe to drop. So you're hedging your bet. So it's doing that because it's thinking it's doing that to protect you. So that your heart doesn't get smashed into a million pieces or, or so that you know you don't just, you know, whatever. So you don't just fall. It thinks it's doing that to protect you, but what it's really doing is limiting you. It's limiting us. The point is it's okay to fall. It's okay for our heart to get smashed into a million pieces. It's okay. Now, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. But it's okay to experience what you experience when you fall. That is how you get stronger. That is how you learn. You know, when you go through these things and you fall and you shake your head because your fall didn't feel good and you pick yourself up. You know, and now you get up and you're stronger. Now, yes, it takes a while and things like that. It takes a while, but at the same time, you're a stronger, more enhanced person than you were before you took the endeavor. However, if you are cushioning the fall, if you are preventing yourself from experiencing all the learning that you can experience with everything, what you are doing is really hindering your greatest good. You're preventing, you're, you're betting against yourself. And so that way, whatever happens, you're still right. No matter what happens, if it works out, hey, great, I'm working, I'm right. If it, fall, if, I fall, if it doesn't work out, I knew it was gonna happen. Can anybody identify with what I'm talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. The sabotages are good. This creates a life of mediocrity. This does not bring the fulfillment, bring, bring about the fulfillment of the life that we've envisioned. The life that we actually deserve. <clears throat> Completion to the next level and beyond. So I'm gonna get right to right, right to it. So okay, so in spite of the dynamics that play out, how do we take it to the next level? How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, I didn't really think long and hard on that, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know. Um, because there's a lot of different things, but you have to offset certain things. You know, there's certain things that have to be offset. Certain things have to be addressed. Okay, the trauma and stuff that that, that that prevents us from wanting to try and things like the trauma that we experience is a trauma because we're looking at ourselves as not being good enough or or not beautiful, not wholly beautiful. Okay, so I want to address that first. Okay, I want to address that first. All right. So before I do that, I want everybody here. To think about in your mind one thing, because we don't have all day. 
one thing that you struggle with, one of your biggest challenges, the thing that, the, the thing that one of the main things that's preventing you from seeing yourself as wholly beautiful. Now, I'll take a moment. I'll take a moment. Can everybody think of that one thing? Can everybody think of that one thing? Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, all right. Now, there's things that I'm dealing with right now. Okay, like one of the things that I'm dealing with right now is I'm trying to increase my patience. You know, I'm trying to increase my patience. Um, <clears throat> definitely trying to do that. Um, and I've come, and, and as I focused on being a more patient person, um, I have found more and more reserves of patience, but it doesn't happen overnight. Definitely doesn't happen overnight. You know, this is part of the human experience. So this is one thing I'm working on. I'll tell you something else I work, I, I, you know, that I thought of as a less than, um, that, and I want to explain, and then I'm going to go into this whole part of seeing yourself as beautiful, because this was part of my realization. Um, I used to have the savior complex. I wanted to save everybody. I wanted everybody to be happy. You know, I went out of my way. I wanted to make sure that everybody was happy. You know, and it really caused a, 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 a lot of turmoil in my life. You know, thinking that I was responsible for other people's happiness. You know, it really did. And. That's how I'm starting. I could look at that one way as far as like there's something wrong with me or I'm less than and tell myself that story. But I began to realize over time that, you know, and this just took some took a while, that I'm responsible for my own happiness. People are responsible for their own happiness. It was a gradual type of thing. Now, there was nothing wrong with this complex that I had, or whatever you want to call it, this because it was a seed, okay? But as it began to grow and flourish, I began to realize it was actually the seed of my purpose to do ministry, <clears throat> okay? So, so, you know, let me tell you something. Maybe you're grateful for me, but I am just as grateful for you, if not more grateful. Because I'm doing my purpose. What started off as this, you know, savior complex or whatever gradually evolved into, as it began to grow and flourish and, 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 and bloom and things like that, as I began to step into a greater realization with myself, my purpose to move to do to do ministry. And so I derive meaning from sharing realizations with others. I derive meaning in my own life when people experience beauty in theirs and, 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 and my participation in sharing had something to do with it. But it started off in its immature seed stage as this savior complex. And now I it, 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 it eventually evolved into a full, a full blown, uh, a flourishing emanation of my purpose to serve. My purpose is to serve. That is my purpose. I was born with that purpose, but I didn't. I wasn't born with that purpose. Just you know, mature. It had to grow. Now the same thing is with you. Whatever it is that you're seeing in yourself, whatever it is. Yes, in its seed-like form, in its seed-like form, it may seem to be a little selfish, a little self-centered. You know who's like that? Children. And children are beautiful. We celebrate. Children are so beautiful and youthful and innocent. But guess what? They're a little self-centered. <clears throat> that doesn't make them bad. Just like those seeds don't make you bad. They're just immature. That's all. So that's the first thing. We have to step into a full realization that we are beautiful. We have to know it, that we are beautiful. That has to create a foundation. If you will take it to the next level, you have to see yourself as beautiful. Wholly beautiful. Not, I'm beautiful here, but not there. 
wholly beautiful because that's who you are. Whatever has developed in you has developed and whatever has not yet developed just hasn't developed yet. That's all. It's just in its immature form. That's all. That doesn't make you not beautiful. That just means there's certain things that just haven't matured yet and haven't blossomed yet. You think when you came here, everything was going to blossom at the same time? Come on. Just be realistic about this. No. And what helps those things mature? What, what is the fertilizer for those seeds? You know, what, what, what tills the soil? Change. Change. Newness of life. Turmoil. Challenges. That tills the soil. What's the, what's the light? What is the, the sunlight? Joy, happiness, that can be sunlight, but the biggest amount of sunlight that you're going to experience is the sunlight that comes when you know thyself. There is an inner radiance that comes with knowing thyself that will shine on all those little seeds and they will begin to reach out and grow and they begin to expand and reach out towards that light that's within you. As you step into a realization of who you are, and as you begin to appreciate yourself and value yourself and spend time with yourself, and I've said this many times, but now I'm telling you why. Those latent seeds of potential will grow and flourish. You will realize things about yourself that you never realized before. You will experience beauty, the likes of which you've never seen. And you will experience a beautiful world. It will seem like the world went through therapy. <laughs> so what else? We have to see ourselves as beautiful. You are beautiful. I want you to take that in. So whatever it is that you were thinking about yourself, as far as that thing when I said to think about that one thing, it's immature right now. That's all it is. Let me tell you something. You're not going through anything that somebody else in the human experience hasn't gone through. So you're not alone. You know, I'm talking about my, as far as thinking about patience, Patient, you know who else was impatient? A couple of times, you find it in the Bible. Rabbi Yeshua ben Joseph, we used to get that way with his disciples. It's like, how many times do I have to, to tell you guys about this and that? He's still doing the same old thing? Yeah, he was showing some impatience, he was showing some humanity. That's beautiful, that was no lack, he was still beauty. We all go through that. So whatever it is that you have in your mind that you feel that was all oh, goodness. Somebody else has been through that. And I'm telling you right now, it's a, there's a beautiful aspect of you that's ready to shine once it reaches maturity. That same thing that you're looking at is a virtue in disguise. That's right. That's who you are. The next thing is this is so important. Feel it, feel it, feel it. Feel your feelings. Feel your feelings. Let me tell you something. It is not spirituality to bypass your feelings. That is a form of neglect. That is neglecting yourself. And you wonder, when you're neglecting yourself because your feelings are a part of you. You wonder when we neglect ourselves why we experience neglect in our environment. We, we attract people in our lives where we're either neglecting them or they're neglecting us. We wonder <coughs> why we're attracting that. Okay? But how you're teaching yourself or how you're treating yourself is how you are teaching other people as well. And you're not telling people, hey, I want you to treat me this way. No. No, but subliminally, we're all connected. We're all connected. Energetically, you're going to attract people that are on that same resonance. 
energetically. You're just going to attract people that are on that same energy level. People that have to deal with the same thing. That's all. That's it. That mean you're bad. That mean you're bad. Is hey, you know, this is where you are right now. Feel your feelings. Hear what they have to say to you. Experience them. Don't try to shove them away. How would you feel if you got shoved away? Well, guess what? That's what you're doing to your feelings. That's what you're doing to yourself. How would you feel if you were trying to say something to someone and they ignored you with somebody? Ah, la, 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 la. How would you feel? But for example, when our feelings, like when we're feeling sad or whatever, and we want to just hurry up and just flood it with some happy thoughts, that's bypassing. That's emotional bypass. That's all it is. That's not spirituality. That's emotional bypass. That's what it is. That's what it is. And your feelings have a, an intelligence behind them, a message that they're trying to give you so that, so that you won't have to experience that feeling, but it's going to continue until you give it the space to listen to it. And hear what it has to say. <laughs> Don't judge it. Don't judge it. Okay, it, it, it may be negativity. Don't judge it. Don't label it. Okay? Just hear it out. Because then underneath that, there's still a message that it has, a divine message. And guess what? Our feelings also have something to do with melting that shell that we created between ourselves and our authentic selves. So they actually are the remedy to us getting to our authentic self. So as we begin to listen to our feelings more, as we begin to just feel them, and just, 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 just listen to them, you don't have to do anything, just take it into the silence. You begin to develop more intuition, you begin to develop more offense, you begin to just know without, 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 you know, without there, there, there being any, any, any basis for knowing, for example, you, you just know things. Like, how did you know? I don't know. I just knew it. You begin to know things without having to read about it. Because you begin to tap into an aspect of you that knows all things. Your divine self knows all things. But when we're cutting off our feelings, when we're bypassing them, when we're pretending, when we're doing all these things, we are cutting off a divine flow that is attempting to bring about our highest good. So be kind and loving to your feelings. Don't label it. Hear what it hear, hear it out. Hear what it has to tell you. Hear what it has to express to you. When you're in doubt about what the feeling is telling you, go to spirit. Just like you go to somebody that you trust for advice, go to spirit. As a matter of fact, ask spirit if you think you have difficulty understanding what spirit has to say. Ask spirit to tell you in a way that you would understand. You can be very practical with spirit. You know? You can be very practical with spirit. I'm not getting this spirit. I don't understand. Why does he, you know, I, I just, I, help me. But tell me the way I understand spirit. You know, I don't do the whole sign stuff. And I don't do that the omens type stuff. I don't do that. You know, just tell me in a practical way that Stephen can understand. And spirit will do that. It will communicate with you in a manner in which it will leave no doubt to you. This is a part of loving yourself. This is loving yourself. We're talking about taking things to the next level. Part of that is loving yourself. Seeing yourself beautiful and loving yourself. Now, just these two things alone, there's going to be some uncertainty. I'm just letting you know. You know, I'm 
see the future for you. If you just follow these two things alone, there's going to be some uncertainty that you're going to begin to experience. What that means is that you're beginning to grow and you're experiencing things that you haven't experienced before. Do not let that frighten you. Okay? Do not let that frighten you. You're taking things to the next level. So when you're taking things to the next level, guess what? That means there's going to be a lot of uncertainty now. Okay? A lot of uncertainty. Do not let that frighten you. There are benefits to being, to, 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 to being uncertain about the outcome. There are many benefits. There are scientific benefits, and there are benefits that you will experience. Okay? Number one, we're more present in an uncertain environment. We're more present to every moment that's happening because we've never experienced before. The brain is rewiring itself as it's beginning to accommodate all this new information. Because, hey, guess what? This is I've never done this before. This is completely new. Life has a newness. This, it's going to have a newness like this. New newness like this, this. Once you step into it and don't recoil from the uncertainty, it, it's going to be magical. <clears throat> it's going to feel like magic. So they encourage. So it, it, another thing that it does is it, it, it encourages the part of the brain responsible for creativity. When you're in an uncertain environment, the part of the brain that's creative, you tap more into that. You know, the brain begins to find solutions. You have to tap into the creative aspect of your brain. Business people know this. Business people that, that, that run businesses and stuff like that, when they run into uh, this, 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 this brand new type of situation, whatever this brand new type of circumstances exist, they have to tap into that whole, that whole uh, uh, creative aspect of the brain to find new solutions for their business. And guess what? That business benefits. Those business people, the, the people that own the business, they benefit because you know, now they're more, they're, you know, experience is a wonderful teacher. It'll give you more lessons and more, uh, more rich lessons than any class or any type of how-to, any type of book or anything like that. Another thing it does is it prevents that mind from going on autopilot because our minds like to go on autopilot. When we, when we do stuff repetitive all the time, like, you know, every day we get up, and we, you know, every day we take a shower, every day we, you know, get dressed, every day we pour our morning coffee, every day it's like the same thing. We start doing that on autopilot. Every day we get in the car, drive, it's on autopilot now. We're thinking about other things now. We're on autopilot, okay? <laughs> the brain, the mind is very creative, okay? It needs to be busier than than, than what a certain environment actually creates. So the mind will then, okay, well, we'll just do this automatically. You know, and then you know, people will be daydreaming or, or thinking about what they're gonna do when they get here, when they get there. You're not being present, you know? You're not really being present because there's still gifts in the present moment. But when everything is like every other day, every day is almost like every other day, the mind goes on autopilot. Sometimes that's okay. I'm not saying don't go on autopilot, but at the same time, it's more beneficial to, or, to an organism, a living organism, to be present. Because each and every moment has a certain gift, a blessing. I'm going to read a quote by Rajneesh. Oh, I pronounced it. Thank you. Okay. The beauty of facing life unprepared is tremendous. Then life has a newness, a youth. Then life has a flow and freshness. Then life has so many surprises. And when life has so many surprises, boredom never, boredom never settles in you. Completion to the next level and beyond. One more. I usually give three points. One more point. Taking it to the next level, the next thing is, and this is a two part, find the gift in the difficult situation. Find, we already know about the challenge part. We know about that part. We know about that part. Okay, you can look at that all day. Find the gift, because I can promise you there's another way of looking at it. I can promise you there's a, 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 a way 
where you can actually see how there's actually a benefit in this situation. About 90% of the time, I'll just say 90, I would say a little bit higher, but I'm gonna keep it at the 90. 90% of the time, if you just think about it, you can think of another way to see this. A way that's not so dark. A way that's not so dreary. A way that, ah, you, know, at least, you know, at least we got this. You know, we can see that silver lining. That's a skill set. If you're going to take things to the next level this year, I would invite you to begin to work on that skill set. <coughs> work on that. On that way of seeing outside of that one way that you are easy, it's easy to see this one way. See it another way. Attempt to see it more universally. Attempt to see it outside of the picture of just you. So that you can encompass something that's a little bit more than you. That's what this country needs. We've got so many people, you know, in politics, people pointing the finger at each other. You know, if you vote this way, you're pointing at those other people who don't vote that way and stuff like that. You believe in this, you're pointing at the people that don't believe in it. Try to see things a little bit bigger than just your own finite view. Maybe there's some benefits. Maybe there's some of those other people. Maybe there's some things that they have that, that they're saying that they have merit. I'm not gonna say who whichever people. It doesn't matter. Because the truth is, truth is on both sides. Okay? It can be on both sides of any argument. Open yourself to that. Don't be so programmed in, 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 like in little groups and stuff like that. Be independent thinkers. Be unique. Be who you are. Be you. The next one is to see the highest. And this, is a, this is huge right here. And this is part of the same thing as far as seeing the highest in a difficult situation, but also see the highest in difficult people. Difficult people, see the highest in them. I know we think that they have to change for me to see something better, but really, honestly, that's old traditional thinking, old traditional programming. It really works the other way around. Okay? I have two doggies that I love. Okay? One's name is Ted, who I uh, raised ever since he was a little puppy. And uh, so I had him like, I don't know, he was like six, seven weeks old. And so one day Ted ran away. And so uh, I asked my partner Claudia to help me find him. And so she did this thing on Facebook and they, she put Ted's picture on Facebook and then they did like a five mile radius as far as where we were. And so all these pictures of dogs were coming back to me, you know, and that's actually how I found my second dog. He was just Titan. Now Titan was a rescue, because you know, I saw Titan's and you know, I was like, well, that's not Ted. He looks a little bit like Ted, but that's not Ted. Uh, I said, but you know, looks like he hadn't eaten in a while. I mean, you know, if you don't find his owner, I mean, I, I give him here. Okay. So, let me get that. All right. So, I tightened. It was a little difficult. It was a little difficult. And he was, he was very fussy. Very fussy. Okay. You know, so I couldn't do the same things with Ted that I did with Titan, okay? So Titan, um, I couldn't take him to the car without him getting car sick. Um, and um, as far as just, <coughs> just being, in, being in the house, you know, he would, uh, like in the middle of the night, he had this, he would start howling, you know? Or then, and it would always happen like, you know, at the least convenient time, you know, like it was 3 a.m. or something, you know? And, you know, that hits your nervous system. You hear that? It's like, you just, you just you know, all you want is just, you want to make it stop. Okay? And, uh, and he also had problems with being house trained. So I wouldn't allow him to be, I, he had to stay in, in, in the room that's for them, in the office that's for them. 
And uh, and I would let Ted be out, which was kind of like not fair because Ted was house trained. Well, one day, and this was really about maybe six months ago, I made a decision. I said, you know, I'm going to change my energy about type. And so I began to see him in my mind as a good dog. So, you know, it's the same thing that I teach, you know, if it's this perception or whatever that you have that are, you know, less than or whatever, it's just okay. you're not seeing yourself correctly. That's all. Well, you know, some of not seeing type correctly either. Okay? You know, and so I began to change my energy towards Titan and not look at him as broken, but I began to look at him as whole. I began to look at Titan as being a good dog that just like any, like any being, any living being just wants love. That's it. Just wants love. And I began to tell him he was a good dog. You know, you're a good dog. You are a good dog. And I began to see him in my mind as a good dog. Well, guess what? Titan suddenly got, got house trained. He raised his energy as I began to show love to him and show and, and tell him that he was a good dog and things like that. And he was a good dog and he was, you know, a welcome part of the family and I loved him and things like that. He began to change his energy. Suddenly he was house trained. Suddenly I could let him just go wrong. He didn't do anything. And you know, some of the some of the some of the howling would stop as a matter of fact. And as a matter of fact, I even realized about that. I was like, he just he's just basically exercising his, his voice. That's basically what he's doing. Because, you know, Ted was always used to being quiet. But somebody had to speak for them. And, and guess who it was? It was tight. And I and, and, and I found this and they were outside. I left them outside to run in the back for a little bit. And Ted was standing by the door patiently waiting on me to let him in. And I heard Titan howling in the background. In the back, I was like, what is going on? Why is he howling out there? He was howling so that I would come let Ted in. <laughs> he was teaching Ted, hey, you got to speak around here, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now Ted is starting to, the, to exercise his voice now. <laughs> so now I got two dogs that are that are that are being advocates. They're speaking, hey, we want this. <laughs> so it's very interesting, but I'm so grateful for changing my thoughts and my perceptions and allowing Titan to raise his energy. And you know, it's like that with children, easily with children. So, you know, there might be some children that you might think they're difficult or whatever. See them in a high way. And begin to treat them as such before you see the actual manifestation, before you see it actually happening. And it will change. It's the same thing with adults. It doesn't matter if it's children or adults, the same thing. So those difficult people, we still have to change. Or else the only thing we're doing is getting more of the same thing because we're seeing them that way. So guess what? They're still doing that same way. And we're seeing them that way. They're still being that same way. And so at some point, somebody has to break the cycle. Completion to the next level and beyond. This is 2023. New insights, new realizations, new beginnings. We're going to be prepared for the newness of life. Now we still have a choice. What do you choose? But before I, before I, I, I leave, I want to leave you with this. We came in standing on the shoulders of our ancestors. Ancestors like Dr. Martin Luther King, ancestors like so many. Then there's some that we didn't even know about. We came in on, the, on, we actually came in on a certain level of consciousness because of them. They had to deal with different, difficult, more difficult things than we had to deal with. Well, guess what? There's a whole generation of beings that are waiting to come into being born that are waiting on you to do your part. They're waiting on you to take it to the next level so that their entry point can be at a place not where we have to deal with things right now today, at a higher level. Why? Because you took it to the next level. Because you did your part. 
So what do we choose? Do we choose the little mind, the ego that wants to look at little things and stuff like that? Or do we choose the mind of God, the mind of spirit? I leave that choice to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Okay, would you please stand and sing uh, hymn 314 in your hymnal? He's got the whole world in his hand. <laughs>
um, all about our church uh, and our search for a new minister. It's all been done. I talked with the lady. The last thing to do is this Tuesday night, <clears throat> and then our search committee will get started going through the applications. So things are really moving along here. So just want to get you up to speed. And then uh, when the search committee goes through all those applications, the members then will be presented with that, and you all will decide who your next minister is down to two. I think you choose two according to the bylaws and then the board chooses between those two. So we're right on target here and going along. So will you please stand for our closing. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God unfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is and you are safe and secure. The Lord watches between me and thee while we are absent one from the other and helps us to know that we are all one in spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you get in a circle for our peace song, please?